very good morning welcome to capel's virtual classroom in our today's class we'll be learning a concept of target costing as well as life cycle costing these two concepts goes hand in hand so it's important for us to understand both the concepts together let's talk about target costing first what will be the scenario if your company will manufacture a product and then when it's time for us to sell the customer rejects it the customers always have their own specification regarding pricing what is if the customer is not willing to pay x price for your product the things will come back to your warehouse this system is a push system you make a goods first then push towards the market if market takes it well and good if it doesn't take it it will come back to you so in order to avoid this problem when market rejects it in terms of pricing wouldn't it be better if we check the market demand first and then we manufacture so target costing is an outward inward approach so we start from outside we move towards inside unlike traditional costing system which is inside out companies make goods first then they try to sell it at their own pricing we are actually fo focusing on a system which is outside in we go in the market do the market research first try to understand how much a customer is willing to pay for your product once you know that particular pricing now it's time for us to decide what should be our cost so that we can sell the product in the market at some profit so if you try to formalize the target costing the target costing formula will be as follows the target cost is equal to anticipated selling price minus anticipated profit let's assume a customer says that they are not ready to pay more than 10 pound for a product in this product you want to make at least 2 pounds profit per unit that means my target cost should not be more than 8 pound this concept is called target costing so target costing is a concept where you get to know the anticipated price in the market then you reduce from this selling price your anticipated profit how much profit you want to make on that whatever is the remaining balance that's what we call target cost in this example our target cost is 8 pound if a company can sell the product at 10 and they want to make 2 they have to make their product within 8 pound itself for any reason if company is not able to achieve that target of 8 pound if they exceed it what will be reduced is only this profit margin because under any circumstances a customer would not be willing to pay more than 10 pound these days customers are demanding and they have their own specifications so customers are very particular that they will not pay more than 10 pound if you make something which is higher than 8 pound that means only thing which will get squeezed is your profit margin now that's why in order to achieve that much profit company needs to stick to this target they should try to make their product 8 or less the lesser they go higher is the profit margin higher they go problematic it will be so this concept is called target costing in practical life most of the big brands like apple samsung and many other big brands are using target costing gone are the days when company used to make something and they used to push towards the customer because there is a huge losses involved especially when company is dealing with something which is related to technology the technology really get obsolete very fast so if they make something and put it in the warehouse for long the technology will get obsolete plus there is too much of working capital crunch here you have invested in stock you have invested in the product and the products you are not able to sell so for all those reason it make practical sense for companies to go for target costing 
So I hope we are clear with this concept of target costing. Now let's move to the next concept which says life cycle costing. The target costing and life cycle costing goes hand in hand. Let's understand what is life cycle cost and then we'll try to correlate both the concepts together. Now let's try to understand the concept of life cycle costing. Let's assume if you want to make something today or you want to build a manufacturer, what will be the step one? Most of us will answer is buying the raw material or arranging the labor. But trust me, this is actually the last step in the internal process of a product. So when we say life cycle costing, the life cycle costing involves certain steps. If I have to make something, the first thing I would like to do is I will imagine what I want to make. So that first step of life cycle costing is imagine. Let's see how we move towards those steps. So life cycle costing. The step one, you have to imagine. You should be very particular and clear what do you want to do. Do you want to make a marker? Do you want to make a mobile phone? How does that mobile phone look like? So that's the step one in life cycle. Step two, create a basic design of it. Once you zero on what do you want to do, it's time for us to create a basic design of it. How that mobile phone looks like, what kind of feature does it have, for what we are making it. So make a basic draft of it, make design of it. So that's step two. Step three, make a prototype. Prototype is a model. Whatever you, are want, you want to make, create a model of it, we call that prototype. The prototype is something which is more realistic. Even if you want to give this prototype to few of the customer to test, it will be much better. So that is something which normally companies like Microsoft etc are doing it. They create the windows, they give it to certain set of people first, they take their opinion, they fix the bugs if are any. And finally they launch it to the market. So similar thing company can do what we call prototype. Once the suggestions, improvements being done on prototype, let's make a final design. It's time for us to make final design as to what kind of features will your product be having, what kind of stuffs we are going to put in the product and that's what we make final design of product. Once we are done with this, now we'll start the process of manufacturing where you need to buy the raw material, arrange the labor and so on. So as I said, this is actually the last step inside the life cycle of product. These four steps are nothing but R and D. R and D stands for research and development. So companies basically putting their efforts, resources into research and development. And very interestingly, I'll tell you that a product's around 60 to 70 percent cost is locked in R&D phase itself. If a company cannot control at R&D phase, they may never be able to control it later. If a company wants to make product which is relatively cheaper, they have to put this in R&D itself. All right. So this is how a life cycle works. A life cycle costing is a costing at each and every stage of a life cycle of a product. As you see all these steps, it involves certain kind of costings. So when we say life cycle costing, we are actually talking about costing at each and every step. It is important for us to know at what stage, how much are we spending on it? And what is the cost of the product, which may be in the process. All right. Now let's try to correlate the concept of target costing with life cycle costing. Remember in target costing we discussed that our cost should be at particular level if we want to achieve the X target of profit. So in my example it was 8 pound. Let's take the same example. I want to create something for 8 pound. That's my target cost. 
In order to achieve this, let's link it to life cycle. If I cannot control the cost at this level, I may never be able to do it here. So I have to make sure that all these four or five steps will not exceed this eight pound per unit. Especially when we say around 60% is locked here. So let's assume around 4.8 to 5 pound is locked at R&D itself. If a company is spending too much on R&D, the cost per unit will go up and then you will not be able to achieve the target cost. That's why it is important for us to understand both the concepts together and correlated together. Target costing, a cost which is targeted. So this is an outside in approach where we know the target price first, reduce our profit margin and then get the target cost. Whereas the life cycle cost is absolutely internal cost, but we are considering the target costing concept while calculating life cycle cost as well. So this is how these two concepts goes hand in hand. When it comes to examination point of view, there are certain costs which may be given in the question, which may be related to R&D, which may be related to production, designing and so on. You should know which kind of cost is what. Any kind of designing cost, development cost comes under R&D and very much part of life cycle costing. So this can be the practical aspect of the question if it comes in any examination. That's all about these two concepts called target costing and life cycle costing. I'm sure by now you'll be clear with this concept and you know how to implement that in practical life. For my next class, I'll see you soon in my next session. Till then, stay tuned and log on to www.capage.com for more videos. Take care, bye-bye.